Welcome to Square One Review Channel. Uh, my name is Alex, and today we're going to be reviewing FIFA 12, the demo, which I believe was released in the last 24 hours since posting this video. I just want to run you guys through some of the uh, basic first impressions that I get off of the demo. Um, as always, I'll start off my videos from now on with a new format, you know, just letting you guys know. This is a review channel. Like these are all subjective ideas, uh, and I think that that's how it is with anybody. So I'll just give you the objective information, my subjective opinion, and you do with it what you want. I would show you some scenes from the games, like little cutoffs, but I really don't want to put the time into doing that. I think also you should take the time to go check out the demo on your own and pre-order the game if you want. Uh, so I'm definitely advocating buying the game because I love the game, I love the franchise, I think you should go buy the game. Or if you want to. Obviously you're watching the video, so that means you're interested in the game. So okay, FIFA, FIFA 12 demo. Where should I start? Uh, first initial impression, obviously things that we already heard about uh, that were going to be improved on FIFA 12, which was the whole entire defense tactic systems. Um, a little bit of the career mode realism because of that, because now you have realistic injuries that are based upon the movements of players and where they were on the field so they could actually sustain certain injuries and then those injuries carry on to have more realistic time frames like if the guy actually you know pulled his um, some, some muscle or like tore a ligament then he's out for a long time. Uh, so I thought that was cool but we'll go over the specifics of the defense tactics um, but the first initial impression that I got from playing the game was the menu system and the way everything looks. Um, I, I like it and I don't. I mean, some of it has changed to where it's more user friendly and easily explained. You know, they, they have a, a, a lower bar now instead of like this text that appears, I guess, to you guys on this side or whatever it is, but how it, how it just used to be you select. Um, you know, if you want an exhibition match, be a pro, online, tor tournament, uh, or your options, it was like on the side of the screen, now it's at the bottom, and you select it. I mean, if that's how they're going to keep it for the actual game, that's how it is for the demo. So it's a, it's a bottom scroller, and you get to like select your options. Um, for the demo, they only allow you to play an exhibition match, or a be a pro match, I think. I didn't go through the be a pro, let me, let me check it out real quick. No, um, only an exhibition match, arena, and practice, the tutorial. The tutorial consists just essentially of teaching you the new defensive moves because they assume that you're an intermediate to advanced player or a player from the previous franchise, so they realize that you already know everything else. Nothing else has changed. The shooting, the, the skill moves, everything is essentially the same. The big change is defensively, and uh, I guess we can go into that. What they've done is they, they've, they've basically eliminated the possibility of you just holding on to A and the, the game making an automatic tackle for you. They've essentially eliminated the you taking your, your character and running into another character and that character making an automatic tackle. They've eliminated that. The way you pace control your character and kind of jockey it from FIFA 10 and 11 is completely different now. Um, but these differences aren't like monumental. It just took me about five minutes to get used to the way it works and you realize that you actually have to put effort into the timing of your tackle. That's it. Once you learn the timing of tackling, which some people are really good at from FIFA 10 and 11, even 9, 10 and 11, um, the timing of your tackle is all you have to really learn. Uh, the slide tackling is a lot more intricate graphically, which that's the other change I was going to mention, which is as far as graphics is concerned. Um, but defensively, when you're, when you're doing the tackling and sliding, the graphics have altered a little bit, which just does change the physics of the game a little bit. I mean, your, your character does more of an effort with the leg out, and so it takes more time to recover, and so this actually also affects the way your player responds to a counterattack. So if the other team is uh, in, the, in the middle of the field, and your player makes a, a mistake in tackling, it's going to take a lot more effort for that player to recover and make it back down the field to make a second defensive tackle or to recover from that tackle. Um, the call player button, which used to be B, or I don't play PlayStation, but whatever the equivalent of the right hand button is here, this button, 
B, whatever the equivalent of that is for PlayStation. Um, that's no longer the call player button. It's now RB, the right bumper. And, uh, and so now you have the ability to pace control your player while you send another player to actually make the jockey and the tackle. So that's helpful in a way, but now that they've changed that, it, it makes you rethink things, which to me can either be perceived as a, an improvement to the game or just a way for them saying, hey, we changed something. So I don't know if like, you know, you want to look at it like, hey, we changed something or we were too lazy to make an entirely new game. So here's one change for you. I don't know. It's up to you. Oh, let's go back to counterattacking and the whole uh, recovery of players because of the physics of the game. Now, the physics of the game have changed significantly to where when you don't have the ball, you're not some super fast, like, easy to move player. Uh, I think that the way they improved it is that they slowed down the players where you can't just dart because you're messy or because you have some incredible speed and, and you're running down the field without the ball to make a defensive counter a, a counter defensive move or some sort of a possession regaining move you know it now it's difficult to regain the ball and just just make this like kind of the tic-tac kind of playing on the field where you, you don't even know who's got the ball it's a lot more difficult and the the it makes the physics of the game move a lot more smoothly so it's not just like the ball swinging back and forth on the field you actually have to think like okay is it worth the physical gesture to go over there or should I just select another player and set myself up tactically for this entire defensive move so they've made defensive plays plays that are based on where your player is and not just selecting the next guy to make that next aggressive tackle so I like that but here's where here's where FIFA and EA Sports continues to fail for me and this is chapter two of my review so okay, let, let's just review chapter one at least. Dave, <laughs> chapter one. They've they've changed a lot of things for FIFA that make the game a little bit more fun. It makes it a let a, a lot less, um, you know that that back and forth spasm spastic playing that you encounter online, and and a lot of that it's it's annoying when you're playing against somebody online who's learned the glitches of the game and who's learned the little tricks on how to counterattack so suddenly that it doesn't matter if you're playing Barcelona versus Real Madrid or like the big teams and you've got stacked players that can like make these kind of counterattack responses it doesn't it didn't matter before uh, because the counterattacks were so relentless I mean you couldn't catch up the, uh, up on the field and I see that as a possibility in FIFA 12 but it's a lot less feasible because now your players have to have the physical duress to not only make a potential counterattack, but to also make an aggressive tackle play that responds to that kind of counterattack. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens once the one-on-one -on -one really kicks in. What has been lacking in FIFA is this general attention to the fact that there's a large part of the of the FIFA world that's missing in FIFA games. It's to me, it's solely biased and dedicated entirely to the European Championships, the European Cups. Let's look at the game. Um, I guess, let me see if I can do this for you guys. I just have to turn the camera around, I guess. Um, and it's, it's hard, it might be hard to see, because again, I, I have it set up weird, but... Um, career mode. Um, you know, the career mode is now driven by the same drama, storylines, and emotion of the real world of football. The player impact engine also harvests information to detect, uh, detect true injuries and carry those into career mode, forcing you to make risk reward decisions with your players. Um, let's see what else they have that was really interesting. Oh, here it is. The head to head seasons. Okay, so head to head seasons. Let's check this out because I love head to head. I love ranked matches. I, I'm not the best in the world. I don't claim to be. Uh, but I don't think that many of you are either. Uh, if you're like me, you're like struggling to, to, you know, destroy like a certain like number of points that you've always had and to like even fit into some sort of ranking table when you like look at the number one guy and it appears like that's his day job. His day job is to play FIFA like 20 hours a day and there's no way of catching up to him, which is like, you know, you guys probably have that inner monologue where you're like, okay, it's unfair. I feel like the developers are playing this game and they're getting all of the like 
top tier points that we should be having. Who knows? Maybe that's just a fallacy of thought that I have. But here it says, ranked online play is brand new in FIFA 12 with seasons, promotions, and relegation. You have 10 games per season to earn enough points to get out of relegation and hopefully promotion to the next division, which means that each season is 10 games, and so once you've surpassed 10 games, that's the beginning of a new season. So you're going to have to have enough points to like be either relegated or or not relegated and and promoted to another bracket in which you take you play 10 more games against another group of guys. Uh, it says it won't be easy as higher divisions means better competition and tougher promotions. Playing in cups. Every few weeks the cups open. Based on your current division, you will qualify for one of four possible cups. During the cup window, try to earn your silverware in 16 dynamic tournaments. So, we'll see how that fans out, but I mean, what they're trying to expand on is online play. Here's something funny that I thought was hilarious they didn't talk about. And maybe this is because they're still developing it, but we're looking at, like, what is it today? Today is September 14th, and they're supposed to be releasing this game in less than a week and a half. Or maybe, what is it, two weeks, ten days. I don't even know the release date, sorry. I'm, I'm ignorant about that, but what I'm guessing is that they don't have enough time to change enough of this, but they don't have anything explained for pro clubs, which is something that I know a lot of people play. I mean, I play head-to-head -head a lot, and I know that people sometimes do play the, um, what is it called, online team play. The reason that setting needs changes to it is because, and like most of you are guilty of this, even I've been guilty of this, you get on there, don't complete an entire game. There's a lot of times where you can't get into a game because of like server trouble. There's a lot of times where a game just turns to crap because like nobody wants to play like for real. And like you've got that greedy guy who never passes or you know, it's just not set up right and it's not very fun predominantly because of two things. One, the way that a lot of people play the game, and B, the restrictions and limitations that EA Sports provides for you to make that happen. <clears throat> so what I'm saying is, you've got a lot of people that get on there, and because of the way that the game has been set up and designed, it doesn't limit those assholes from playing the game in an assholeish kind of way. You know, it just lets them do whatever, so it's like, it should kick you if you haven't selected a team within 30 seconds or maybe 10 seconds. It should kick you if you haven't selected a position within 10 seconds. Like those things where you had the one guy just waiting around for his position to be available and everybody else is sitting there waiting for a minute and a half by the time which half the people have left the game because they don't want to wait a minute and a half. Like me, I'm impatient. But our impatience has caused a series of behaviors online, which is that Okay, now nobody wants to get on FIFA and play anymore because we're too impatient to wait. So, that whole entire thing is messed up pro clubs. I, I don't like it the way it is now, and I don't think that they're going to fix it, but if they do, it's going to have to be monumental for all these things to not happen. So that's FIFA 12 in a nutshell, but that's only the demo. Now again, once FIFA 12 comes out... Once FIFA 12 comes out... I plan on making a systematic evaluation of the game. So we're like, we're systematically breaking down FIFA 12 and seeing what it's worth because what I'd really like is for there to be a FIFA 13 or 14 that was really worth it. Like, like imagine like the big one would be like a FIFA 14 that like is the road to the World Cup and has all these like huge drastic changes that would be, that would be actually cool to see. That would be really interesting to see. But, you know, that's just a matter of whether FIFA or EA Sports, should I say, EA Sports, makes some sort of drastic change that's actually worth it. We'll have to wait. Thanks for watching. My name's Alex, and again, that was my review of the FIFA 12 demo only. Uh, I recommend that you download the demo and play it so that you get used to the defensive tackling and some of the new changes. So if you have any comments or questions, just leave them here. Uh, so we can all discuss FIFA 12, um, or like what I would say is I would recommend to just download the demo yourself and make your own opinions. Um, again, everything I've said is my subjective opinion on how the game should work. Um, if you like this review or any other reviews that I make, don't forget to subscribe, leave your comments, friend me, leave your messages, whatever you want to do. This is Alex, and this has been yet another Square One review. See ya.